Okay, well, everyone, I think it's time to get started. And uh, my last talk will be about uh, the uh, Sanskrit project, which is an extension for Scala programming language that adds a bunch of, a bunch of new syntax suite for uh, working with process. So this, this is how uh, I will structure this talk. First of all, I will introduce this language because uh, probably most of you have not heard about it, which is under development. Then I will give a few examples, very simple ones, to introduce what it can do. And then I will outline our plan for the future. So what is this language? It is an extension to Scala programming language that adds a bunch of new syntax to it. And this syntax is inspired by the algebra of communicating process, uh, which is a mathematical theory for describing uh, processes. And uh, our aim is to simplify the event-driven and concurrent program and all the programming that deals with any kind of process by introducing this mathematical theory. And here is a brief history of this uh, syntactic extension. We have started as a plain Scala library, uh, which described what the process was, or we call them scripts in subscript. And uh, the syntax for subscript was defined in a custom fork of the Scala compiler. So we uh, modified the parser and type of phrases in order to get our syntax work, because it's rather uh, non-trivial and standard Scala features cannot provide it. But uh, this approach was not very uh, intuitive, not very scalable, it was hard to get started in the language. So currently we have uh, moved from this approach and currently we are using the standard compiler uh, we are using a processor based on a parser, uh, parser generator library called Parboiled. Uh, this uh, parser generator library is called from an SPT plugin before the compilation takes place and rewrites all the new syntax to the lead Scala calls to the code library. And as a result, it is very easy to get started with the project. You start, you can start by uh, simply three lines in the build SPT and one line in project slash build SPT. So this was a brief introduction of the history and the definition of the language. Let's see what it can do on an example. Here is an obligatory hello world example and uh, a description of what it does. I have included here a short and verbose version. Uh, so uh, both of these versions have these three imports at the top, and they basically activate subscript. By default, our extension is deactivated for each source. You need to activate it using these three imports. Uh, in the short version, we are using this subscript uh, uh, subscript application trait uh, in order to uh, in order to invoke this link as if it was the main method of an application. So link is a script. A script is a specification of a process. And this script consists of uh, two operands, of a body that consists of two operands. The uh, first operand is uh, one call to print, uh, to print a line, and the second operand is another call to print a line. And they are unified, uh, they are glued together by this space, and space in subscript is a sequential operator. So basically what happens here is that uh, hello gets output, and then in sequence world will get output. Uh, here is our both version, but I will not stop uh, for a long time here because I don't have much time. Uh, basically, what happens here is that we uh, see how this subscript application works, how things work without subscript application, so we manually run this uh, uh, script called Lib. And we explicitly uh, specify that print lines are a plain Scala code. It, it is not part of the subscript, it is part of Scala, so hence this fancy graphics here. Uh, so you have already seen this sequential operator that is a space in our Hello World application. Uh, so we have a bunch of other mass operators to allow various kinds of processes. Uh, we have uh, four flavors of parallel operators transpired by Boolean logics. So basically a process can fail or succeed and uh, these states are uh, analogous to Boolean true and false, hence the four parallel operators. We have a choice operator which allows us to choose what, which, which particular over to run uh, according to some, uh, to some uh, specified conditions. We have a disruption that allows the right hand side of rent to disrupt the left hand side of rent. And uh, we have various kinds of conditional operators 
it handles uh, for Boolean and do handles for processes success and failure. As already said, that success and failure are analogous to Boolean true and false. Also, we have uh, uh, very nice capabilities for passing information from process to process. It is called a data flow. We can specify uh, which value should a process take using this caret syntax. Uh, we have very much uh, uh, a lot of uh, flavors of carrots for uh, various cases. And uh, here we can specify how to pass this result value of the script message to uh, this uh, print line function, uh, which is uh, an ordinary print line function. Okay, uh, one more uh, more complicated example is a uh, graphical user interface GUI application, a Swing application. Uh, in our case, it is a uh, so-called iTest application that is available in our repository if you are interested. And uh, what it does is uh, that uh, it's, it implements a naive approach to uh, test uh, uh, one's eyesight. Basically, uh, what it does is that it, it, it uh, displays a bunch of letters uh, uh, with different font, and the user tries to get them using a keyboard. Uh, so the actual point is this list script. And the uh, lead script is responsible for uh, specifying, for initializing the GUI. Uh, we use a custom sync here, and uh, white uh, white line here is uh, a sequential operator. And uh, uh, here we have uh, these uh, uh, square brackets. Uh, they uh, even hit them as round brackets for normal uh, for normal uh, uh, mathematics. They specify the priority, the priority of the operands. So inside these brackets, we have uh, we have uh, two operands glued with this uh, parallelism or parallelism operator. So basically, what we have here is that this view white screen will be present. Uh, white screen is basically a progress bar. And this progress bar will be present until we initialize our data. And initialize data, in data, what it basically does is that it establishes a connection to the database. Once any data is done, because of this uh, uh, or parallelism, uh, uh, once it has success, this uh, wait screen will be cancelled, and the data from any data will be passed in the data flow with, uh, because of this character operator. Uh, so, uh, so this repos, which defines the connection to the database, will be passed along to the next script, to, uh, to the next expression. And so uh, this uh, next expression basically executes the program. And uh, uh, I want to, uh, I want to uh, describe precisely how we uh, come to this uh, test frame. Uh, but uh, we uh, come uh, to this frame as a result of uh, this uh, execution of main screen. So we display the main screen and the user presses the button test and uh, uh, this uh, test screen appears. Why, uh, why describe uh, this uh, test screen? Because uh, it is uh, what we call an object algebra uh, approach. And this test is both, uh, is both a process and an object. It can behave an, as a process and an object. Uh, it extends a particular trait from our uh, core library that allows it to behave as a process. Uh, as a process. Uh, what this trait uh, obliges it, it to do is it obliges it to implement this uh, lib, uh, this lib script that will define the logic of this object uh, process. Uh, so uh, in this uh, in the original trait, which is uh, uh, which is by the way the ancestor of this script process, uh, this script lib is uh, an abstract script. So basically, you can think of scripts as of uh, fancy methods because. And this is what they ultimately are right to. Uh, well, um, actually, uh, it is uh, the behavior is quite simple and uh, beautiful. We have here a disruption operator, and it basically tells us that we should uh, execute the main execution flow until the user presses the cancel button. And the main execution flow is a sequence which tests first the right eye and then the left eye. And this time, the carrots tells us to write the results of the test of each eye in a type. And so one and two are the positions of uh, where to uh, where to write the results in this type. And uh, here we have a sequence that uh, uh, 
And that uh, uh, starts with the test. Basically, we have some stuff outputted on the screen. And then here, this line deserves particular attention because it is a choice operator here. And basically, what it says is that uh, uh, the program here will wait uh, for the user to press either enter on the keyboard or OK on the GUI button, and then progress. All right, so these are uh, two very quick examples. And uh, uh, now a few words about uh, a future development, uh, future plans, and uh, uh, if maybe someone is interested, how to get started with uh, using our project, experimenting with it, and maybe contribute. Uh, during our development of uh, our uh, of subscript, we have discovered a bunch of very interesting areas where it uh, behaves, uh, uh, where it really shines. Uh, so, uh, first, uh, these three uh, areas uh, are visual computer interaction, prototyping, and uh, simulation of various processes. What is common in them is that they all involve very complex processes. When you have the user in your decision loop, it is always uh, it always adds very much to the complexity because a human is uh, well much more complex than any program, and uh, you might want to uh, predict uh, what can be done in uh, this uh, program by a user. Um, also, we are planning to expand to the JS area so that uh, it, it will be easy and possible to describe web applications using subscript. And also, a good idea would be to uh, integrate uh, our language in Dotty and uh, maybe uh, integrate it in a very generic way so that anyone can uh, redefine the syntax of uh, Scala uh, in any way they like, just like we did it in uh, subscript. We, it would be nice to generalize our solution. All right, now a few words of, uh, about how to get started if you are interested in uh, the language. So maybe uh, you are aware of the projects like Ruby clones, uh, Scala clones, uh, Python clones, and so on. They are basically puzzles that teach you the language. And here we have our own version of clones that uh, uh, basically all this a bunch of exercises to do, uh, which uh, help, uh, which uh, teach you the language uh, in a very elaborate way, and allow you to uh, try it out um, in place. So it is very nice to learn by doing. Also, another uh, interesting thing that we have is this cheat sheet. It is very simple. It is just a summary of all the features we have in the language. Uh, Why I'm, I'm talking about it is because subscript is. Uh, has a, a lot of features, and you might be confused and uh, say that it would be hard to remember the person uh, them all. And this is why we have this cheat sheet. Finally, uh, all of these materials and more are available by, uh, via our homepage and our official website. We have a GitHub homepage and an official uh, website here. Uh, and uh, well, if you are interested, you can look up my GitHub in uh, on the website of the conference. I will uh, upload the slides on uh, SlideShare. I have already uploaded them. You can uh, you can uh, look at them and uh, follow the links and get all the materials to get started. Also, if you are interested, please feel free to contact us. We will help you to get started. Well, thank you for your attention. I don't know whether it is uh, there is time for questions. Questions? I have a question. Uh, why you need to change the language? Because, uh, you know, for example, after model we have uh, classes, model by classes, huh? and uh, also we have translation gopher, which uh, model TSP, you know, communicates second process models. Yes? Why as a pack, why change the language? Why not provide something uh, in language which will increase uh, your use base, definitely? Uh, uh, so, if I understood you right, you're asking why modify the language, uh, the language syntax, and not just uh, have everything as a library, right? Yes. Well, uh, the whole point is that uh, we are trying to make a DSL to simplify the process description. Uh, the problem with the, the current libraries and uh, languages is that they don't really allow you to describe complex processes without uh, without uh, running into uh, non-obvious syntax. For example, uh, Scala Swing 
it uh, uh, uses this reactive approach to uh, all uh, to uh, specify interactions to buttons and other elements, and uh, it is rather non-obvious. And here we have an example how we specify the reaction to a button in a very seamless way. So here we have uh, this choice operator that is selects between the OK button and uh, an enter button, and only when they are pressed, it progresses to the next line. So in effect, the test is a reaction to uh, this uh, either of these events, and uh, it won't uh, be possible to do that in a very easy and obvious way using a uh, plain scalp. I can say that it is possible. No, I think that it is possible to embed and to write this color, which will transform this. No, listen, maybe by scalar uh, fertilizer. Maybe uh, look at the approach. Okay, thanks.